Hey guys, Jeff here with the Connaissance Camper. First of all, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. This will be my last video for 2015. I probably will not get to making another video before the New Year. So I uh, wanted to thank all of my subscribers and viewers. I appreciate all of your comments. Uh, for those of you that uh, watch my videos, I do try and respond to all of the comments. It might take me a while. Uh, unfortunately, this is not my full-time job. I have a family, and so I try and I, I try and respond as quickly as possible. But sometimes it does take a while. If you've made a comment and I haven't responded, please let me know. It's it's not I'm I'm not ignoring you on purpose. Uh, I may have missed it, and I will say that with the amount of viewers and subscribers that I'm getting. I'm finding it is hard to kind of keep up now that now that the channel is growing and I greatly appreciate that. So if I did I haven't responded to something that, that you made a comment on, don't take it personally. Please private message me. I, I, I want to know. I want to try and be as involved with my subscribers as possible. So with that being said, what I'm going to talk about today is a bushcraft kit uh, tool toolkit. And I've had a lot of people ask me what are the tools that I take out. 99% uh, of the time on, on all of my trips. So I thought I would share those with you today. Now one of the things you want to keep in mind, for me for me personally, the tools are the heaviest part of, of my kit. And for me, tools are very important. Uh, I will say that sometimes I find that you know I may be taking too many tools, but I'm also in the construction industry. So it's kind of an innate uh, reaction to take probably more tools than I need. But I'd rather have a tool in my pack and not need it than to need a tool that I don't have. So with that being said, there's a few uh, reasons I carry these tools and I thought I would share those with you. Uh, when it comes to woodworking, you need tools that will obviously carve. You need tools that will notch. You need tools for making feather sticks. You need uh, tools that will not only cut with the grain, but also against the grain. And so that's kind of the, the criteria of these tools that I have here on the table, is that they have to cut with the grain, uh, cut through the grain, cross grain, and also be able to carve and do smaller uh, tasks uh, in, in regard to woodworking. So from this side here, I have a Baco Laplander saw. Don't need to really do a lot of talking about this. Everyone knows what this is. And for the new guys, if you do not have a folding saw, uh, I just prefer the Baco Laplander. It's inexpensive. It's tried and true. I have abused this thing for several years and it just keeps going. I, I've, not, I've not had any issues with this saw whatsoever. Now if I needed to do bigger tasks I might take a, a bow saw or I may take bow saw blades and make a bow saw but for 99% of my outings this this does the trick. Alright the next thing is a large blade and a lot of guys will say you know if you have an axe what do you need a large blade for? Well again the to me having the 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 right amount and the right number of tools for the task is very important. And so if I can do something better with this blade versus my main blade or a saw, it just makes sense. Yes, it may be redundant, but a lot of the woodworking tasks, if you split them up a bunch uh, among a bunch of different tools, it's going to conserve the blades and the tools. You're not just going to be abusing them all the time. I hear people say all the time that you know you should have one one blade, one blade fits all. And you know, again, this might go back to my construction background. I just don't agree with that theory. Now, what I what I do believe in is that you should be able to, with your skill level, be able to take a blade, a single blade, and survive with it. I do, I do believe in that. I do believe that your, your main blade should be your blade that if I dropped you off out in the woods with just this, you should have the, the experience and the knowledge to, to succeed with that. 
but that doesn't mean that's the way you should roll out in the woods every single time. So I'm going to have a large knife. This is the, happens to be the BK7. This is my large chopper. I will also baton with this again to save my main blade. And I can do smaller tasks with this. Not as easily, but I can do it. And I can also use this as a uh, kind of like a machete. Like I've used this if I know I'm going through a bunch of thickets or brush. And if you can get down to the V part of the, you know, if you have the larger, you know, vine here and you have you know thickets coming off of it if you can get to that V part uh, with this knife I can chop that off and clear out a path so I could also use this as a fro this is something that I'm going to cut with the grain of the wood not necessarily against the wood but I could do notches with it as well and uh, beaver cuts and things of that nature so I'm definitely gonna have a large blade in my kit the next thing I'm going to have is an axe. And an axe to me is just as important as anything else on this table. In fact, you should be able to, if you're going to carry an axe, you should be able to do everything with an axe that, that you can do with all of these tools. Now with the exception of the, the saw, because again the saw is cutting across the grain, uh, that's going to be a little easier to do with a saw versus an axe, but you can do it with an axe. It's going to take you longer, and you're going to be chopping away for a long time versus trying to cut through something. But you should be able to do everything with an axe that you, you, that you would do with a knife or a saw, a large chopper, or a small saw. And as your skills uh, increase, you're going to find that, yeah, I can do pretty much everything I need to do with an axe. I can make feather sticks, I can make notches, I could make a bow drill with this thing, I can chop larger things, uh, a hammer, you know, obviously a hammer is a very useful tool, I don't care what you're doing, uh, hammers are probably the most popular tool out there in, in the world. So, definitely want to carry an axe. The next thing would be uh, some type of multi-tool. And I just happen to carry a Leatherman Wave and this thing is probably 16, 17 years old and it has you know, pliers, scissors, a file, a couple small uh, saws on it. It has flat heads, phillip heads, an auger, it has a bottle opener. So you, you really need to invest in a good multi-tool for your kit. The next thing would be what I would refer to as like a small game or a skinning knife. Now this is the Azula 2. Uh, this thing weighs almost nothing. And I found that this is an excellent skinning knife. Now I haven't done anything as large as say a deer with this, but for squirrel and rabbit, grouse, quail, I mean this is just a great knife. And the micarta handles on it even when they get wet whether it's blood or water or sweat it's still really you can really get a hold of that knife and it does not slide out of your hand so something like a small skinning knife or one of the buck knives like buck makes a buck skinner I find that the smaller knives with the smaller game the the smaller knives are a lot easier to use than say something like that or a large you know, a larger fixed blade knife. These are just incredible little knives to, to skin small game with. And then as far as cutting tools, I have my main blade. And this just happens to be the LT Ray GNS. And I love this knife. This is in a uh, saber grind. And that's just kind of what I grew up with. I'm used to a, a saber grind. There's nothing wrong with a good scanty grind. I just find for what I'm used to and what I what I my experiences is are is that the uh, saber grind just works better for me than say a scandy. I just feel it's more durable. Uh, it does a lot of the tasks uh, better than a scandy grind. There's nothing wrong with a scandy grind though. 
and then paired with that is a half inch ferro rod. Now a lot of these tools are multifunctional with the exception of the ferro rod. I mean obviously its only purpose is to start a fire but once I get a fire started there are a couple dozen things I can do with a fire. So this is probably the only thing that is not multifunctional but it creates something that is. The next thing would be my what I call my junk drawer. I have two things in here that I consider tools. One is my sail needles and I have four or five sail needles in there. These are excellent tools. I would not go out without some type of a sail needle. They just they come in handy for all kinds of things. And then I usually carry two blanket pens and I would invest in the good ones. You're going to spend a couple dollars a piece on them, but you can use this as a temporary uh, fix for a shelter. Uh, I've buttoned up my pants with these before where I broke, busted the button on my pants. And you can wrap up a wool blanket around you at night and pin this together. There's just a lot of different uses for a, a, a good uh, blanket pin. The next thing, this is almost impossible to duplicate out in the wild. This is just a headlamp and this is a probably a $20 black diamond headlamp and what I like about it is it's simple. On, off, if you turn it on and you want less light, you just hold the button down and it dims it. It blinks once, that's your lowest setting. It's also adjustable, which I also like. Uh, for those guys, who, for those of you that are new or have never had a headlamp, I would never buy one where you can't adjust this up and down. Especially if you're out in the cold and you have a hat on, and I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to want to be able to angle that thing down. A uh, little trick is when you go out, take one of the batteries, turn it backwards. That way, in your pack, something doesn't push into it and turn it on and you wear the batteries out so uh, definitely would have a headlamp a compass and I would never buy a compass without a sighting mirror again I'm thinking about multifunction uh, the sighting mirror is important one you could use it as a signaling device uh, the other thing I use it a lot for is let's say I'm walking through thistle and I cut my face and it just you know, it's like a paper cut. It just won't stop bleeding and you're kind of wondering, you know, how bad is it? I can't see it. Well, a lot of times you, you, you grab this, pull the mirror out, you look at it, you realize it's a small scratch, quit crying, get to work. So a lot of times if you can see the injury, it makes you feel a lot better. You know, it's not as bad as what you thought it was. The other very important thing with this mirror is that during tick season, you know, those nasty little boogers like to go places that I can't mention. And so before I bed down at night, I'll take my headlamp and this mirror. I'll check those areas to make sure I don't have any ticks. Sharpening tool. Uh, this is a work sharp. And I, I just, I prefer this thing. I know it's a little heavier than most of the field sharpening devices. But there's a, several reasons I like it. One, it has a coarse pad, it has a fine pad, it has a ceramic rod here, and also has a smaller one there for just real quick touch-ups. Uh, it also turns so that, you know, if you wanted to sharpen or even make a fish hook out of something, you could do so with that groove with the little trough in it. And it also has a piece of leather for stropping with. And for you new guys, the sometimes sharpening a knife can be intimidating this already has 20 degree angles on it which most of your field knives are going to be anyways so you can start out at the right angle and you're not dulling your blade as opposed to sharpening it another neat little thing a lot of people don't know about this particular sharpener is that you can actually remove these uh, that's just a magnet right here so you can actually remove those or you can replace them or in this case, here's a, a manual that explains how to use this. Uh, you could also use that to start a fire with if you're desperate. But you could put fish hooks in here, a small ferro rod, some fishing line in this little compartment. So that makes a neat little spot to hide some smaller things. 
and then this one also comes off now there's not really any storage there but uh, yeah nonetheless it's it's a great little tool uh, it's ergonomics is great you just put your thumb there and you sharpen away and you're clear safe you got the ramp here so no uh, no fear of cutting yourself and then the last thing that I would consider a tool it would be uh, my Sawyer mini filter for for water and this is just put in an old CD case and that's something that I consider to be uh, one of the tools so you know not everything has to have a wood handle and steel to be a tool so these are the things that I would carry uh, these are the things that 99% uh, of the time these are the things that I'm gonna take now that 1% that isn't represented might be something like a hook knife uh, or something to actually be able to drill into wood whether it's a one of those hand crank drills or a t-bar that you can that has like a almost like a a chuck bit in the end of it has a handle and you can put a drill bit into it so you can actually drill a hole into the wood that would be like the missing one percent now what would I upgrade from this kit well I'm definitely going to upgrade this compass at some point it's a very cheap one I'm just really not happy with it so I'm gonna upgrade that at some point and the other thing that I would upgrade here would be the axe and the only reason I haven't done that yet is that this thing just keeps you know I'm hoping it'll break so I can justify buying a larger woodsman axe but it just keeps going and going and going and I only spent thirteen dollars on it and it works so why replace it if it if it works so and then the last thing I would say I mentioned earlier is probably if I'm gonna be long, out longer doing bigger tasks uh, for shelter I would take a, a buck saw versus the the Baco the Baco is still gonna be in my kit but I would add a uh, a bow saw to that so hopefully this is helpful this is Jeff with the common sense camper camping out